There's nothing out here. I don't know what the hell. Oh no, wait a minute. So anything, my cabinet's coming loose, which is making me nervous, especially about being on these bumpy roads, because it really rattles, and I don't need that falling apart on top of me. Okay, this is ridiculous. So yesterday I went into an abandoned house with a strange couple. You wanna hear something really weird? And today I pull into this boondocking, this boondocking spot in a boat ramp, and there's a car here with a guy sitting in it, and I'm freaking out. He's just sitting over there in his car. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Okay, so I turned off the highway because I'm ready to stop for breakfast. It said four miles because I've been seeing all these signs for Ozark River Trail. And I was like, should I stop? You know, why am I flying through? Well, I have business I have to take care of. I have some things I need to do. So that's why I'm rushing back west. But I saw one that was just four miles away. So I'm like, okay, let's go. And I get two miles out and it's a dirt road. I swear, if I had a dime for every time I ended up on a random dirt road in some random state in the middle of the country, I'd be rich. And I don't know if you can see up there, my thing is really loose up there. Okay, I don't, there's nothing out here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see up there. Look at my whole cabinet thing is coming loose. Okay, this is ridiculous. I don't think I've gone four miles yet. So anything, my cabinet's coming loose, which is making me nervous, especially about being on these bumpy roads, because it really rattles, and I don't need that falling apart on top of me. So I'm anxious to stop and look at it, and there's nothing out here. I don't know what the hell. <sighs> I'm kind of tired of wild goose chases, to be honest with you. And I don't have a cell signal, so I can't look up the spot I was trying to find for lunch. <sighs> well, I'm getting to see some beautiful country off the beaten track. <laughs> I have to look at the bright side. How many tourists travel on these roads? <laughs> Fun! Look at that! Seriously, right now? Okay, I think I can do that. Look at that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> wow. This is why I have all terrain tires. <laughs> I 
I just wanted breakfast, lunch. I just wanted to eat a meal in a nice nature, surrounded by nature in a nice quiet place. <laughs> Instead I went, what? Six miles on a wild goose chase on crazy ass dirt roads. All right, I'm here. Let me s Oh shit. Oh no. And one of these fell out of, wow. So this cupboard flew open. I don't think that's ever happened before. Shoot. I've got quinoa, broken glass. Great. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, shoot. Ah, oh, in Sadie's dish. Ah, all right, I'm gonna have to clean this up. It even chipped Sadie's new dish. That's a bummer. Bummer. <laughs> it looks like I have to buy Sadie a new dish. Shh, but don't tell the internet. Because have you ever noticed that when you say that you need something or you mention like new shoes, all of a sudden the ads are everywhere for what you just said you need? <laughs> and you feel like you're being spied on, right? Well, you are. <laughs> Unless you're using a virtual private network. And that's why I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. With a virtual private network or VPN like Surfshark, you can browse the internet anonymously. You can avoid avoid those annoying cookies. You can avoid those annoying pop-ups and all those ads. Have you ever noticed like you'll go to a random website you've never been to before and they're like, hey, dog dishes. <laughs> and you're like, just leave me alone. So you need to make sure you're protected online. Not just little things like annoying advertising, but your passwords, your personal information, your browsing history. And by using a virtual private network which allows you to sign on to the internet masking your real IP address and giving you a completely random IP address from anywhere in the world you can be rest assured that your information is safe from your keyboard to your financial institutions and you can even make sure you stop seeing all those annoying ads everywhere you go online. And with Surfshark VPN, you can be rest assured that every single device in your household is going to be safe while you're browsing the internet. Because with Surfshark, you get protection on unlimited devices in your entire household. And if you ever worried that somebody might be spying on you through your webcam, Surfshark VPN also protects you from somebody hacking into your webcam as well. And for those of us who live on the road and you might be connecting to public Wi-Fi networks in libraries, at fast food restaurants, at stores across the country, you are especially at risk of getting your information and your data stolen. So anybody who lives on the road and especially if you, even if you don't connect to public Wi-Fi, you absolutely should be protecting your data while you're surfing the internet. So go ahead and download Surfshark and get started today using my link surfshark.com slash Carolyn's RV. When you sign up, you're going to get an extra four months absolutely free. That's less than a cup of coffee per month to keep all of your information safe. So click the link in the video description below surfshark.com slash Carolyn's RV to get four extra months so that you can browse the internet with the peace of mind knowing that your private information is safe and without all the annoying ads. Oh man. See that's the sign. Oh Blue Spring four miles. Yeah I don't know. I went five. My RV gets about eight miles to the gallon if I'm lucky. And I have a 52 gallon tank, so I get about 400 miles per tank. So I'm filling up uh, pretty much every day. Yeah, these cross country trips are not cheap. Or what did I uh, figure last year? I think $1,300, $1,400 just in gas.
just a quick breakfast on the go. Just some buckwheat flour that I grind myself from whole groats and protein powder and a little bit of baking powder. And then I put peanut butter and berries on top and that's my breakfast. So I found a city park just up the road from the gas station, like half a mile up the road. So this is my lunch spot. I already ate. I've just been doing protein shakes with uh, spinach in them or whatever vegetables I have trying to get more vegetables but I was craving pancakes I haven't done my pancakes in a really long time so I did buckwheat pancakes with a little peanut butter on top I'm full I see a police officer behind me <laughs> all right just let Sadie sniff for a few and then get back on the road let's go before we get in trouble old-fashioned playground <laughs> old monkey bars I've never seen this before swings are over there everything is plastic now I was talking to my mom remember those cable the big huge wooden spools for cable we used to use those for tables like picnic tables and stuff like that uh you know we were talking about those and i was like it'd be really cool to ha have one of those at your place but they're all made of plastic now everything is made of plastic cheaper lighter so if it's lighter weight then it's cheaper to ship it's all about the money let's get back on the road And I don't know what to do about this. I thought maybe just some screws had come loose, but look at it's the whole center. And it's hinged to this, so it's making this rattle really bad. It already used to rattle, so I added this to it. But I don't know how that's attached. It looks like it used to be glued, probably. I could try to nail or screw it back. Oh boy. But look at, you see that? Yeah, maybe a hinge or a bracket to try to hold it up here. Oh boy. Did I say my RV is like 130 in RV years? Cause I've been living in it for seven years. Yeah, so. And all the roads I take it on and all the rattling yeah all right let's get back on the road we still have several hours and it's one o'clock let's get warm out watching the sunset on tennessee Stay in the light.
In 800 feet, your destination will be on the right. Your destination is on the right. So yesterday I went into an abandoned house with a strange couple. <laughs> I met them. They were totally fine. And 24 hours later and uh, countless episodes of true crime later, <laughs> I pull into a boondocking spot and there's a guy in a car and I go outside with my neck knife on. I'm telling you, true. Uh, yeah, you can't listen to this stuff and not be affected. So all my common sense goes out the window <laughs> because I've been listening to too much true crime. So I'm not going to listen to true crime anymore because I've been out here long enough to know that 99.9% .9 of the population are not crazy psychos and I'm safe. But when you immerse yourself in that kind of stuff, it affects you. So that explains why I get so much fear mongering in my comments. <laughs> Stop watching true crime and all that people disappearing in the national forests and national parks and all this sensationalized stuff. So I got to find something else to listen to that's just as engaging. I listened to a little bit of Sam Harris today, but, uh, and then that history one, they sounded too much like they were reading. So it wasn't really that engaging, but I'll give them a try again. But anyway, I'm warming up some curry. I'm waiting for that guy. He's just sitting over there in his car, and I am waiting for him to leave before I get too comfortable. I still have to move someplace, but... True, true crime or not, being aware of your surroundings is part of the staying safe on the road, and I think my lens might be dirty. Hold on. And when I pulled in through this little tiny town, there were some of it pretty run down and uh, looked a little seedy, not like one or two houses. The rest of it looked totally fine. And with the guy sitting there, I just don't want to necessarily look like I'm spending the night here. And that's something I would do anyway. It's just a part of being aware of your surroundings and staying safe. So anyway, so I'll eat dinner and wait for him to leave. And then I'll position my RV for the night. The reviews here are good, so it'll be fine. Mmm. I got a good night's sleep here. Boat ramps and fishing access areas can be a little hit or miss. A few cars came through, a few people fishing before dark, but I don't think anybody came through after dark. That's not always the case. Sometimes spots like this can be hangouts for people, teenagers, things like that. So I'm always a little on guard staying in a public place like this, but I got a good night's sleep. And just behind me, there's this nice little old road. 
that's blocked off. So a good place to stretch our legs before we get back on the road this morning. And I found something really cool when I was looking at the map and the surrounding area last night. So we're going to do a little sightseeing before we head out. Turn left onto Kansas 66 West, U.S. Route 66. Continue on Kansas 66 West for half a mile. Exit the traffic circle onto Southeast Beasley Road, then your destination will be on the left. This is called Rainbow Bridge, and it's an old bridge over Brush Creek on former Route 66. It's now a county road, but the bridge is a single span concrete marsh arch bridge and the sole surviving bridge of this type on the entire length of the former Route 66. Rainbow Bridge was built in 1923. It's been covered with graffiti over the years and vandalized but they recently painted it white again and it's been on the national register of historic places since 1983. you might recognize it from a tlc special route 66 main street america where brad paisley performed the song get your kicks on route 66 right here on this bridge have you ever met miss lindy she's a guy with the bright red hair now she stands out from all the rest You know her anywhere Well, she's mine Yeah, she's mine Well, I love that little girl with the bright red hair Well, Miss Lindy My Miss Lindy Well, I love that little girl with the bright red hair Have you ever seen Miss Lindy? She likes to dance all day And when she does rock and roll Just 
turn my radio back on and it's like in the exact same place. This song is on the radio in the exact same place it was, it seems. I don't remember, of course. But it's in the middle of the song. Telling you I want you. I need you. But there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. Now don't be sad. Cause two out of three ain't bad. Isn't that weird? I don't, I mean like. Literally. This was what was playing on the radio when I turned it off last night. I turned it on and it feels like it's the exact same place as when I turned it off. Unexplained Mysteries from Carolyn's RV Life on the road. And I know I've talked about this before, listening to the radio, some songs you listen to in the light of 2024, where we are. And this is another one. I, I remember hearing it a while ago and thinking about how it teaches women to settle. I want you and I need you, but there's no way I'm ever going to love you. But don't be sad. Two out of three ain't bad. So settle. That's what I hear in all the ways that women are taught to settle. That you don't deserve everything or you're never going to get everything. So two out of three ain't bad. You know, I don't need to love you. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the songs you can't listen to anymore or that you hear now? Uh, that one, the teacher song, Young Teacher, The Subject. Oh, boy. Can't listen to that. Uh, White Wedding. Uh, there's another one about a sister. What are some of the songs you hear in a totally new light today? Let me know in the comments below. I was wondering, I like, somebody needs to do a dissertation on how that those kinds of songs and music have affected society and our psyche and what masculinity is and what women have were taught. I'm trying to think of what some of the other ones are. Gosh. It's not white yeah, white wedding, but there's another one. Let me think about it and I'll come back to you. for 63 miles.
is it's just a grass fire. Wow, it's a lot of black smoke for a grass fire. Your destination is on the left. Thank you. Okay, let's go see what we gotta do to check in. Look at we're here. It's hot. 90, at least 90. All right, 20 bucks for electric and water. Dump station sold. Wow, check this out. I have a little marsh and a boardwalk right behind my campsite. This is nice. Wow, what a nice find this campground was. On iOverlander. I swear by iOverlander. Let's go. I'm assuming that's beaver. Look at that. Yeah, look at the trail. Look at it. <laughs> Look at, and it looks like they chopped down these trees over here. Look. See? Wow. Oh yeah, I think they put that on there to prevent, they paint it, I heard, to prevent beavers. Wow. Yeah, you can see the, the trail, the beaver trail going in.
Look at this, you can camp here. Wish I'd known that, although there's no hookups. No, there's no hookups. But look at it, you can camp on your very own peninsula for five dollars. That is cool. See, I'm over there. Wow. Look at there's tons of them. Here, look at all the way around the lake. Pratt Lake Veterans Memorial Campground has 20 RV sites with hookups, 30 and 50 amp. And I think some even have water and sewer, but there is a dump station here. There is fresh potable water and this gorgeous lake for fishing. I saw a lot of people fishing here. I love these peninsulas though. $5, <laughs> so cool. Look at that, way back here. Well, there's two way in the back. Oh, these would be awesome. I'm gonna come back here when it's not as hot. I have my very own peninsula boondocking spot. Five bucks a night. So this is Pratt Lake, and I think we're about four miles from the actual town of Pratt, Kansas. It's a 51-acre lake, and it's only like 10 feet deep. And a lot of people come here to fish, hunt, and to view wildlife. And I guess they hunt prairie chickens, waterfowl, shorebirds, mammals, and reptiles here. Hmm. The campground is first come, first serve. You can't make reservations, so it probably gets pretty busy here, I would imagine, during the summer. wasn't a bad stay in this little, I think it's a city campground, a memorial, a veterans memorial lake, a lot of fishing uh, near Pratt, Nebraska. I've been taking highway, uh, yeah, highway 400 west and uh, not a bad place. I love that they have the boondocking on the individual peninsulas. It's definitely something I want to mark to come back maybe in the fall. Uh, a little bit of loud there was a big party on one of the pier peninsula things last night, probably five or six cars in there. And they got a little loud after I went to bed, but not too bad. And it was just me and two other campers in here the whole night. So I'm cleaning up, uh, doing my dishes. I cleaned quite a bit of cleaning because things get really messy when you're rushing place to place. So I swept and scrubbed my sink and doing my dishes, getting a little bit of a late start. I think it's, it's after 10. Took a bath, <laughs> much needed, and uh, getting ready to hit the road. Filling up water. There's a dump station here, so I'm gonna dump. There's garbage, which is really always really helpful, so. Can you feel it? getting closer. So is the morning after. I know where I'm going I don't know when I get there But I'm ready for the road I'm ready for the road This time I won't let go of your hand I need you to trust your heart Come Are you ready for a pill? Want a pill? Oh, the gummy peanut butter is so good. 
It's such a good peanut butter. There you go. Good girl. I'm not afraid of this freedom. I'm not afraid of changing. What's going on? You want to go for a ride? You don't look like it. All right, and that is a wrap on Kansas. Next time, I will see you from Colorado, where I hope to find some cooler weather and some gorgeous boondocking so I can show you the beauty of the sights and the sounds of Colorado. Hey, if you like my content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. What the heck have you been waiting for? And even if you think you're subscribed, go ahead and double check right now because YouTube does unsubscribe people. I hear it all the time. And click that bell for notifications so you never miss a thing. And if you want more real-time, behind-the-scenes content, things that I don't share with the public, go ahead and join Patreon. There's a link in the video description below. You can now join Patreon for free, and I do share some things for free patrons as well. So go ahead and check it out if you want real-time. All kinds of cool stuff over there. Thank you all very, very much for everything you do to support my channel, all the work that I put into my videos. It really means a lot to me that you're here. Whether you're brand new or whether you've been with me since the beginning, you all help make this channel possible. And I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. See you in Colorado.